So we're now in chapter two. In chapter two, we're going to talk about diversity and organizations. And diversity is a um, kind of a hot button topic. It's one that's easily misunderstood. So we're going to try to unpack in this short lecturette a few important details. The first is uh, the book will talk about diversity management and it'll talk about surface level diversity and deep level diversity. Surface level diversity is what we normally think of when we think about diversity. We think about race and, and ethnicity and are you male or female, those kind of things. Deep level is really about your attitudes and values and who you really are as a person. When we talk about diversity, we also talk about stereotyping and discrimination and things along those lines. When I'm out in my backyard, I discriminate between picking up a hose and picking up a snake, and there's a big difference between the two. What happens is when we apply this where it shouldn't be applied, um, then we get into trouble. So let me give you an example. So here we have a basketball player and we have a doctor. So we can't see much about them, but you'll probably use stereotypes to determine that the basketball player is probably male, okay? And by, by the looks of the silhouettes, you would think that, right? Okay, the basketball player is probably tall. He's probably young. Um, and if the NBA statistics hold up, three out of four in the NBA are African-American. Okay, so those are some stereotypes. Now, on the other side, we have a doctor. We can kind of tell that it looks like a female doctor from the silhouette. Let's say the doctor's Asian, just for the sake of argument. Now, with all those, the black basketball player and the Asian doctor, you have a bundle of stereotypes that are included in that. It, is one really smart? Well, we don't know yet. We, we'd like to think that the doctor's smart because the doctor will... Well, here's what else we know. We know that she's probably older. She's not 20. She's probably at least in her early 30s because of med school and her residency and all those things. Um, she's probably stay, stayed in school, so we'd hope she's smart. She hopefully paid attention and can prescribe the right kinds of, of um, drugs and, and symptoms to diagnose those kind of things, right? So we know these bundle of things, but what we don't know is about the individual, whether the individual basketball player is any good or that doctor doctor is not a quack. We don't know those things, but we're just, if we just looked at the Asian woman in a white coat, we would think all kinds of things about her that we might not be able to legitimately attribute to her. So discrimination, again, is to note a difference between things, but it's unfair discrimination. It's unfair to use it when we assume that the stereotype about this class of person is true about that individual. So we have to recognize individual differences. Otherwise, we're falling into this stereotyping trap and it's really unfair to people. Now, I want you to look at, after this video, the EEOC categories of discrimination and they fall into things like age, disability, equal pay, genetic information, harassment, national origin, pregnancy, race, color, religion, retaliation, sex and sexual harassment. The book will talk about this, but I also want you to look at these and you can click on each of these links and you'll be able to see um, what the federal government has to say, how the federal government has defined each of these. Now. When we're talking about um, this category of uh, discrimination and stereotyping and job performance and things along those lines, we want to look at two broad categories of ability. So ability is the individual's capacity to perform, right? Can they do their job? And it comes into two types. Generally speaking, it's physical abilities um, and intellectual abilities. Physical abilities are things like strength and coordination and dexterity and balance and things along those lines. Most jobs don't require a lot of physical abilities, at least not most white collar jobs tend to be as paramount as uh, intellectual abilities, the ability to think and reason, critical thinking, all the things, the reasons why you're sitting in this kind of class right now, the intellectual abilities. Most societies place high value on intelligence, uh, uh, all other things being equal, smarter beats dumber, and we want more of that, right? So there's two types of abilities. Now, there's also some certain biographical characteristics that are important. 
So um, one, for example, and I'm only going to highlight the one, is tenure. So tenure is a good pred uh, predictor of employee productivity, and it also is a great predictor of job satisfaction because these are positively related. So what that means for you is if you're a manager and you have and you've been there for a while and most of your people have been there for a long time, they're probably they're probably both productive and satisfied. On the other side, if you have lots of turnover, you as management are doing something wrong. Lots of turnover is usually a, shy, a sign of poor management somewhere in the process. So be careful, pay attention to that and see, well, just compare notes in your head and think, well, what's going on in my organization? Do we have uh, a lot of productivity and a lot of satisfaction? If we do, we'll probably have uh, long tenure. If not, mm, something's wrong and we probably need to fix it. Okay, let's talk about diversity again. Um, when you look up diversity, here's a Wikipedia photo of diversity. What do you see? So you probably think in these categories, we think man, woman, or we think black, white, but that's not it. You should be looking at this photo and seeing more than just male and female and race. You should be seeing other things that are just as important to diversity within your organization as these categories. For example, finance, human resource management, marketing, legal, operations. So you need deeper levels of diversity than that which you normally talk about. Now, I say that in one breath, and in the next breath, I'm going to say this. You don't need, so we have this idea that more diversity is better, or if we just have, you know, add more and more layers of different types of diversity. Look, your diversity is not for diversity's sake. It's for productivity's sake. It's so you can see all different perspectives. But you don't need diverse levels of, say, the criminally insane or uh, cheerleaders or my children. Those are my children, by the way, and they're very cute. But um, they won't really help in the organization. Unless it's a toy company, they're not going to add anything to this productivity conversation. So you just have to be aware of that, right? So... When we talk about managing diversity, we want to think in these terms. Diverse, diversity management, here's the textbook definition, is the process, uh, uh, the process and programs by which managers make everyone more aware and sensitive to the needs and differences of others. And that sounds great, but that's not really what you're trying to do. What you're trying to do in diversity management is make sure that everybody is understanding and valuing that People come from different perspectives, and those perspectives are valuable. All these people have these, these very different um, views, and these views, if they're managed, can contribute to the overall synergy of the organization. But if they're not, they're going to be warring factions, and that's dangerous. Marcus Buckingham made a career of saying, look, here I do, here's your strengths, here are your weaknesses. Now, if you understand your strengths and you understand your weaknesses, now you can uh, appreciate the strengths and weaknesses of others. So I know myself, I'm not a real detail guy, right? I love organizational behavior and management and leadership and all these kinds of things because I find people fascinating, right? So why do people act like they do? Well, that's a really interesting question. But accounting is not for me. But I appreciate the accounting person or the quantitative person that wants to get into the weeds of the details and they love that kind of thing. I appreciate, I value that person. That's diversity right there, okay? Because they're doing something, they excel, they love doing something that I really don't want to be doing and I don't have any gifting in. Okay, so now when we're talking about attracting diverse employees, okay, the, the book talks about three things. They talk about targeting recruiting, then ensuring that hiring is bias free, and then creating a positive diversity climate. I, I rearranged it, I flipped it exactly upside down because until you create that positive diversity climate where yeah, we, we do respect all these different views. And then we ensure that hiring is bias-free. Targeting recruiting is not going to amount to much, okay? Because you can do it, but people will come and then they'll leave very quickly, okay? Diversity comes down to this. Look, it's a matter of perspective. And if one person feels like they're drowning and another person saying, no, it's not, it's, it's just fine. I they're both entitled to their opinion. They both see things from their perspective and their opinions are valid. And to tell them that it's not, is not really going to be helpful, right? Um, this is another cartoon that shows diversity. Boat, land, right? I mean, both are thinking, wow, this is great. I can't... But, you know, their opinions are kind of in conflict. And that's the nature of diversity. You have to manage diverse perspectives because very, sometimes you'll be on the same page, but often you won't be. And when you're not, you have to work 
together and figure out how you're going to work together to see from the other person's uh, perspective or walk in their shoes and then come up with the best solutions possible. Now, before I go, I want to mention a couple things. Watch the Dove. Um, when we're talking about surface level diversity, I just want you to see the, the Dove commercial um, or the Dove um, YouTube video uh, that shows the woman being made up for the billboard. And then I also want you to watch this little clip of Thomas Sowell challenging the orthodoxy of, well, if you just have a certain surface level diversity, that cures it. He's talking to Charlie Rose and that's worth the time. Thank you for your time. Please read the book and hopefully this will help you um, spur some thoughts about how you should be thinking about diversity. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.